In 2003, a study by Northeastern University proved that racial profiling happens in the state of Rhode Island. Racial profiling refers to the practice of police targeting people of color whether they're driving or walking down the street. They believe that people of color are more likely to engage in criminal activity. It has taken us to the point where the community and the police can no longer trust one another. We would like to thank everyone who appears in the video for their bravery. Some of them have put a lot on the line to speak out about the truth, but racial profiling is an issue that needs to be addressed, not just swept under the rug. You know, when I first came to Rhode Island, uh, I, I was very um, taken back by the relationship of the police and the community. I've been working on this for well over a decade, um, talking about the problems of racial profiling. And the worst part is in the very beginning, they kept telling us it's a perception, it's a perception, it's a perception. I got tired of hearing that it's a perception when you're living it and knowing it and experiencing it and your neighbors are experiencing it, your kids are experiencing it and now my grandkids. Cops are supposed to keep you safe and all but for me it feels like everywhere every time I see them I always have to like look back if they were trying to discriminate me again. You can't say that I'm in the gang from like what's, what street I'm on. I know I'm on a bad street but I'm not bad. You know what I'm saying? They feel like, well, we're doing our job, but you're, how are you doing your job if you're just automatically picking anybody out the number? You're causing kids now these days to act rude and violent. When I was younger, I, was, you know, I wanted to be a cop. But now, you know, as years pass, now I just think cops aren't even doing their job. They're just bugging kids. And they did that in front of my little brother too, one, one night. And now my, my little brother's nine years old, and, he don't even, and I don't even want to hear him say this. But he, he does say this. He says, I don't like cops. And he's nine years old. Nine years old. Nine year old kids aren't supposed to be saying that. Um, I've been pulled over so many times that I noticed that when you try to be nicer to the police officer, once in a while you get a nice police officer, but usually the case is they want to know where you're going, what you're doing in, the, in that neighborhood, what's your business there, um, do you have anything in your car? And you get pulled over, you get stopped, lights are on. Friends that you know go by and see you and they look at you. You feel like a criminal when you know you're not. I'm a citizen of the United States. I have no reason to carry any other documentation. I have no reason to be afraid of anything. I pay my taxes, I vote, I do everything legit. My cars are legit. And I don't think I need to be driving around in fear. Being a black woman an older black woman, I'm getting there, you don't run into the same problems that your kids do. Racial profiling is a segue in our community and it leads to problems. It leads, it's a segue into the criminal justice system for our kids. How often do I get pulled over by the cops on arrest? Uh, if in uh, November, I would tell you that. I, Probably like, I got pulled over 16 times. Like they were just harassing me, just telling me, yo, you got any drugs on you? You have a, you have a gun? Uh, not so long ago, about a month ago, there was uh, these cops who, uh, who stopped in front of my uncle's house while we was chilling. We was uh, playing with Say, a little feather game that we like to play. And the cops stopped us and asked us like what, what gang are we affiliated in? And they pulled me out out of a group of five. And they talk, they kind of like discriminated me by telling, telling me that I'm in a gang and I have a gun. And all I did was tell them my name and I told them what I was doing. I felt like I was like put down and because I'm Asian. So I was coming from, coming from work, which I was really tired and I was really beat. I noticed there was cops coming up towards me. They got out of their cars, like like they came, like like basically like I was on cops, you know. And they just got out of their cars and say, "What are you doing out here? Where are you coming from?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm coming from work." And they said, "We work at," and I'm like, "I work over there." And then they 
ask me the same question again, over and over and over, just to see if I want to slip, if I'm going to slip up. They patted me down. They checked my ID. They sit up there telling me, oh, well, we have reason to believe that uh, there's a, someone hijacking cars and you look like you fit the description. Like, what do you mean I fit the description? And, and then they just continue on with it. Like, well, where are you coming from? Like, coming right back to it again. Like, what are you talking about? One time when I was just going to Hanover, Hanover Street for Cambodian New Year's, you know, I'm having fun, yeah. You know, hitting people with shaving cream, throwing powder at their face. And then I got really dirty, so I borrowed one of my friend's bike to go home. And as I was riding off, I noticed uh, a cruiser following me. And as I got home, you know, I rushed, I rushed home all the way, then threw the bike out. Then as I got off the bike, I seen two cops just run in my backyard and grab me and throw me on the wall. And they asked, yo, what you doing here? I was like, I live here. And they was like, oh, you don't live here? Why are you lying for? So I pulled out my keys. I was like, oh, if you don't believe me, let me put my keys in the door so I can go in that house. I was like, nah. So as I was trying to convince them I do live there, which I really do, they were just bugging me. It was like, you got any drugs? What, you, what, you roll with anybody? I was like, nah. I don't do anything. I just came from Cambodian New Year's. So the only thing that actually stopped them from like actually arresting me, throwing me in the car, was my neighbor, because he came in at the right time and said, oh, nah, he lived here. He was like, this is the landlord's son. Um, my recollection of dealing with the police, not only in Providence, but all over the state, um, being a Latino male, um, it's been... Uh, it's been difficult. One of the times that I remember was um, I was taking my son to Hasbro. He was being tested. Um, we were driving down uh, on 95, 195, and we were hitting the East Providence um, border. At that time, we were in traffic between two trucks. As the trucks reared off, uh, I noticed a East Providence police officer on the side of the road. I did not slow down. I didn't do anything different because I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was just taking my son to the doctors. Uh, at that time, um, East Providence police officer pulled us over. Um, he walked to the car with his hand on his uh, gun belt. Um, started asking me right away, like barking orders, license registration, what are you doing here? Well, where are you going? And all that. I gave him my license registration. Then he started asking my son for his um, license. And I told him, excuse me, officer, my son's only 16 years old. He has no ID. Uh, I'm, and then when he's like, well, where are you guys going? I told him, we're going to um, Bradley Hospital. He's being tested. Um, police officer, when he pulled us over, all he saw was two Latino males. That's all he saw. That's all he noticed. And he just took my, my ID, took my registration, came back, didn't say a word, didn't say why he was pulling me over, and just said, okay, you can go. Like giving me permission to drive. As a police officer, I was approached by police officers who, who came at me, you know, the wrong, you know, because they had no idea that I was a police officer as well. So, but then when they found out that I was, then they changed their whole attitude, their, their, their whole approach. So, so my thing was, well, what if I wasn't a police officer? One thing that I remember is um, working. We worked in an establishment and we got out at one in the morning and I used to give people a ride home. And I can remember being stopped three times on the same route, taking the same three black men home. And it got to the point where they actually just knew the car. They knew my car and they knew I would be giving these three gentlemen a ride home. One time I was stopped in East Providence this particular time, not that that's the only place. Um, and I was going to a housing complex. They told me that they had a lot of problems with stolen vehicles. And I said, officer, do I look like I stole this vehicle? It's mine, it's registered, it's insured. I have a license, why are you stopping me? Um, and he proceeded to tell me that they've had stolen vehicles in the area. Oh, your tail light is out, my tail light's not out. <laughs> I know it's not out. 
I was just at the end of my rope when he said, you can leave. And of course I left. My grandkids are now driving. My grandkids should not experience what their parents experienced and what I experienced. We have to make progress. There has to be a, a reason for what you do. And, and, and the, you know, and there's, even if it's reasonable suspicion, there should be suspicion based on some activity, what the person is doing, the action that they're doing, not the way they look. Uh, I would. I would love if they pass the bill because I'm seriously getting tired of just getting stopped while I'm driving in the car alone and they just stop me because they think I steal the car or something. The data shows, yes, there is a problem. Yes, racial profiling happens. Yes, it does exist. It happens to real people. It happens all over this nation and Rhode Island is not exempt. Not only are minorities stopped and searched more often than non, once searched, uh, minorities are less likely to have contraband. That's a key point. And, and I don't think that message is out there. I don't think, um, I, I mean, all police, uh, police are not just out there to racial profile. They do have a job, they do a good job. Unfortunately, no one wants to tackle the problems and no one wants to police the police when there is a problem. I don't think this conversation would be taking place if it were not for the fact that the, the police are abusing their authority. Many police officers have worked with us hand in hand through the years and they're still there, they're still in this with us. What we need to do is tackle the, the non-believers I mean, we did have a legislator just in the last session say, if there is any such thing. Racial profiling is no longer a question. It's a reality. We've come with sincerity and we're coming again. And we will keep coming until this problem is, is under control. Racial profiling affects many different people across Rhode Island every single day. It brings the people of the community to distrust the police force. It can even ruin a young person's life. We need the Rhode Island State Legislature to pass the Comprehensive Racial Profile and Prevention Act to protect the community and give us the respect we deserve.